We want to get you, the supporters, back into the stadium for games as soon as we possibly can. But until then, of course, the matches are being played behind closed doors. So please don't turn up at the stadium and try and gain entry. Celtic's been at the forefront when it comes to, to planning for the stadium being a safe environment for the players, the staff and the external visitors on a match day. So with the footprint and the stadium segregated into green, amber and red zones, here's a rundown of all the safety measures in place. For the players, well, the team coach will enter up at the Clyde Gateway and make its way down towards the stadium in this direction. Now, for those vehicles that don't have access to the red zone, they'll be diverted to the, the other side of this barrier where the TV trucks are situated. This area here is restricted for those with red access only. And the important thing to note is that when you're in the red zone, you can't leave it. And for those outside the red zone, they will not be allowed in it. This keeps the players and coaching staff isolated as much as possible from contamination. Everyone will be temperature checked before being allowed access to the stadium. Club officials, of which 10 are allowed from each club, they'll be parking in the main car park outside the stadium and entering via the main door. For the press, media and photographers, they will gain entry to the stadium using the usual press entrance. However, in keeping with social distancing measures, these markings placed at least two metres apart on the ground will assist those matchday workers. As for Celtic staff on a match day, a separate entrance is set aside for them. Not only that, once they've been temperature checked and permitted entry to the stadium, each office space is labelled with a maximum occupancy based on the size of the room and the need for social distancing. The dressing rooms are of course in the red zone, but social distancing still needs to be adhered to. That's why the lockers have all been marked up to show which ones the players can and can't use. Of course, it means that this room now isn't big enough to fit the whole squad, and that's why a separate room is set aside as an overspill for players to get ready. For the coaches in the dugouts and the substitute players and backroom staff, social distancing measures need to be in place. The dugout will have a maximum of four people in it. The chairs clearly marked as ones to be used or avoided. The area of seats next to the dugout in the main stand will be occupied by the subs and the backroom team. Again, there are clear markings to show these people where they should sit and which seats they should avoid. Safety is paramount, so no one will be left in any doubt of where they are meant to be. The match on the pitch takes care of itself, but the corner flags and the goalposts need sanitised pre-match, at half-time and at full-time. You might also have noticed members of the ground staff around the perimeter of the pitch sanitising the match balls when they go out of play. You might be wondering about interviews and post-match press conferences. Well, all interviews will take place outdoors and in order to comply with the red amber zone restrictions, any manager or player interviews will take place here in front of the main stand with the interviewee standing here pitch side in the red zone and the interviewer in the amber zone at least two metres away wearing a mask. Safety is paramount. That's why around the stadium our signage is clear and informative, reminding everyone in attendance of the sanitisation and safety procedures designed to keep them safe, enabling them to get on with covering the match or for the players, winning it.